Hi everybody, Princess Rainy Cloud here and welcome back for another video and today I am just so excited. It's such a beautiful, beautiful day outside and I'm in kind of an interesting mood and I think it has something to do with the fact that it's fall. Oh, and all the heat is basically subsiding and the leaves are falling and oh it's just it's just a such a beautiful time of year and even my hair is a little bit more curly today so <laughs> I'm just in a great mood and I hope you all are as well today it is going to be another Sasquatch episode so today I want to get on to the next um, topic in this particular genre and what I want to talk about today is the differences in fact just sometimes the vastly differences in the reportings that people have of these creatures so stay tuned we're going to get into that I wanted to talk about this is because I love to hear people's uh, experiences. I am just uh, addicted to watching anything that is Sasquatch related, uh, whether there is documentaries or even various podcasts that would just have people on that would talk about the how they came across it, what happened, you know, what did they see basically the situation that they were in and just kind of like step by step what they went through. And the other night I was watching a documentary that I had not watched previously called The Spotsville Monster. Now, I don't like to use that particular um, word when talking about Sasquatch because I think that is doing them a disservice. I don't think they're monsters, but I can understand why some people might feel that way because there are a lot of accounts of very, very terrifying encounters with these creatures. So before we get going on that, I want to share with you one of the sightings that I had over the past year. This video I took one early evening, I want to say, late last spring after the whole pandemic began and I had uh, gone to get a coffee, sitting back, just relaxing, enjoying my coffee one of my favorite spots I like to just view the forest from and I wasn't really expecting to see anything that day it was probably before the sun started setting but because when you're in the forest area it's a little bit darker so you'll notice this video is a bit darker but you can still see this creature's face and an additional one or two that is with them. Uh, the second one isn't as easy to see, but you will notice that there is a creature that is, when you're looking at the video, it is to the left and a little bit lower. But I was sitting there just looking, watching the forest, uh, actually observing birds more than anything. And I felt that something was watching me. So I glanced over to my left and I had a face looking back at me, peeking around a tree. Now I was a little bit higher up because I like to go to higher places and I will discuss that a little bit further. However, I was just sitting there looking eye to eye with this face. And it reminded me, I mentioned in my last video, something from Where the Wild Things Are, that book, you know, that children's book, or a giant Peter Chris, <laughs> the drummer from Kiss. But it was, 
he was so, so tall because later on I went on another time when it was light out and looked at the tree and realized that this tree where this creature was peeking around from and it almost seemed like he was bending down to look around the tree. That particular part of that branch, I estimated to be about 10 feet tall. So prior to that, I always thought it was insane that people were reporting these things at 12 to 15 feet tall. But now that I've seen it with my own eyes, I that is not an overestimation. I know there's gonna be those who do not believe me, but it is what it is. Whether people believe me or not is not of my concern. This was really something, and we were very close. It was probably about 30 feet from me, and I never felt scared at all. You can see he just has this very peaceful, inquisitive look on his face. Just, just a beautiful encounter. In fact, I was the one that eventually just kind of said, okay, it's getting a little dark, I need to go, and walked away. These are basically sightings that are very sporadic, but from time to time, when I least expect it, especially being that I have the view, and also now that I know that they're in the area when I'm out in different places that are surrounding, you know, the radius of where I live, I become much more open to that. And especially now that I know what I'm looking for, it is a little bit easier to spot them. They basically find you. And if they want you to see them, they'll let you see them. If they sense there's something about you that might be dangerous, they're not there. You'll never know they're there. So I, I really follow the belief, uh, much like the Native Americans feel that, you know, if you approach them with an open heart and a calm spirit, and you have no intention of doing harm to them, you will most likely eventually encounter them if you put yourself in an environment where they could live. And that is water, cover, food, um, you know, open space. If you really are um, interested in looking more into Sasquatch and, and you'd like to have your own sighting, just approach it with a very respectful manner. Um, also find yourself a place up high. You'll notice that you'll hear about sightings where people have been up in tree stands or they might be up sitting on like an overlook deck. A lot of times they like to be up on ridges as well because it puts them in, in an advantage. But um, you can still find places that are more of an elevated uh, level to where you also feel a little bit more comfortable you don't feel like you're down in the thicket of it. And to be perfectly honest, going into the forest, I used to wonder about like wild creatures and you know what type of animals are out there that could harm me, but I'm more worried about ticks, <laughs> especially since I've been down here in the South. But always, always, always just be very careful when you're out in the wilderness regardless, because whether there are Sasquatch in the area or not, there are plenty of apex predators out there, such as mountain lions, even coyotes, you know, wolves, sometimes bears. It all depends on where you are. So you always, and, and honestly, probably the scariest predator on the planet is what I'm more worried about finding in the woods, and that's usually humans. So keep that in mind. Getting back to the documentary that I watched the other night called The Spotsville Monster, it is just a just a low budget uh, production that's been put together by a man by the name of Jeffrey Scott Holland, who also wrote the book, Weird Kentucky, Your Travel Guide to Kentucky's Le Local Legends and Best Kept Secrets. I do believe that's what it's called. Uh, I have not yet read that book. My sister read it and she highly recommends it. She said, wow, you know, because she's also interested in this subject as well. And she just said that, oh my goodness, a lot more to it than meets the eye. Well, I'm inclined to agree because I think just looking back into the accounts of the Native Americans, 
you know, they, there's just so much information. For the average person, it's kind of hard to believe. There's a lot of things that happen on this planet that we just don't understand. Even in the realm of science, uh, there's a lot of things that come across as paranormal, yet there's a perfectly uh, understandable explanation. So getting back to this, uh, this documentary, he basically is just taking us back to his youth, and the experiences that he and his family had living out in rural Kentucky. It was terrifying. Uh, they didn't know what to do. They also had neighbors who were uh, basically dealing with the same type of situation. And when he describes it, I could see how it would be very scary, especially at that point in time. He, like he explains that they didn't know what it was. They and now we have you know we have the internet, we have all these documentaries, we are slowly but surely having more and more scientists kind of becoming interested in and um you know just various people who are experts in uh anthropology that are actually starting to kind of put their careers on the line and look at it a little bit closer. But back then you I mean it was myth, it was legend, if you had even heard about it. So he said that it was just really, really scary. They had a lot of things that started happening. And they, he said that these, th these creatures would come to the house, tap on the outside of the house, look in their windows. And I mean, my goodness, if you did not know anything about Sasquatch and all of a sudden you had eight or nine foot tall creatures covered in hair that looked like eight men looking through your window. I mean, I could understand how terrifying that would be. He's a local law enforcement, you know, just would kind of write it off as, oh, you know, you just saw some bears. We don't really know if they knew what it was, but uh, it's a real, I'm not going to get too much into that, but it's a really interesting documentary that kind of gives that side of it. Um, he also talks to a Native American man who actually has had lots of experiences with Sasquatch that were all, for the most part, positive. So, it, it kind of covers both sides of the story and he's not trying to um, villainize Sasquatch. He's just telling his experience. And, and I have to appreciate that because uh, not all experiences are gonna be good because I do hear stories about how terrified the dogs get. And I suppose it all depends on the, the particular creatures, the situation, um, whether or not the dog is, you know, more high strung. I, I don't know. I don't know what really plays into that because I've never had that experience, but that is a common uh, reaction to dogs that I hear about where they are just, normally they'll go after anything, bears, you know, even cougars and, and coyotes, but yet when it comes to the Sasquatch, they, dogs that are normally afraid of nothing, uh, climb under the bed and curl up their tail. And had this happened, I think when I first arrived here, I would have probably been very scared because I wouldn't have known kind of what to expect from these creatures because the only interaction that I had had prior to that was that terrifying night at Big Basin which even though that was a scary event, I, nothing happened to me. They didn't harm me. I could say, oh yeah, it was a terrifying experience, but that was only because I, it was my perception made it terrifying. But you know, there are those people who are really scared. They're out hunting or they're up in a tree stand and, um, or they're out fishing or camping or just this one woman had given a, uh, an account. I think she was on one of the Monster Quest episodes, but she was she was out hiking by herself. She said that this thing like chased her through the woods. She said she has never been so terrified in her life. So I get it and I would never want to discredit people's feelings of fear that could come from this type of an encounter, especially if you came across an animal that was aggressive. And if you really think about it, 
this could this could be for any type of a predator that lives in the wild whether it's a bear or a mountain lion or even if you're out swimming in the ocean you know sharks they are doing many of them are just doing what comes natural to them but there could be those individual creatures that are just unstable that could be dangerous but just because there is a scary um, encounter does not make all of them dangerous. So I hope that I, I want to make that clear. I really enjoy reading about the Native American accounts because there are well over a hundred names that various tribes across you know North America have for these creatures. But I, if I remember correctly, all in all, they, they could have uh, estimated there is about 470 different clans because that's what they refer to them as, are clans. And um, many Native Americans view them as a, a type of people. And they do not like them to be, to be referred to as animals because they really view them as sentient beings. And that is one of the reasons why I'm really against anyone who is out to uh, what they call harvest one of these creatures for science. Um, if you really think about it, we don't know what they are maybe they are a type of an ape and because they look so much like a human that you know tribes had viewed them that way but you know they certainly know a lot more about them than we do because they've lived with them for hundreds if not thousands of years so you know who are we to question that but i want to put it into perspective for example if you were down uh exploring say the amazon rainforest and you came across a tribe of humans. Now they may not look anything like you and have never come in contact with the modern world. If you came across that group out in the rainforest and you knew for certain these were, these were people that were never documented, well, it would be unthinkable to shoot one, to harvest, a specimen to bring back to prove that they exist that it that just it it is just ludicrous so that is my feeling on this and um and i know that there are many varying opinions and i might even get some you know nasty comments in the comment section and that's okay uh, i'm not worried about what people have to say but I, I really think that we have to do what's right for our planet and treat our planet and the creatures on our planet with respect. And I think we've come beyond that uh, point where we have to just shoot something to prove it's there. I, I just think it's ridiculous. So that is one of the also the reasons why I've come forward with the information that I do know. And it's trust me on this it's very minimal in comparison to there's probably a lot of people out there that have a lot more information including our first nation uh people however um i really i want to talk about it because i want to bring it out of the realm of ridiculous and help establish respect and stop looking at it as just a joke or a hoax or a circus act it's it's deplorable to me so i want to i want to put that out there because really i believe in karma and you get what you put out so if you treat the earth badly it's going to turn on you eventually there are so many accounts and the legends or the history very rich historical accounts from our first nations people uh, about the Sasquatch and they tell tales that vary as well. We have to um, look at each individual encounter uniquely because Native American names are always synonymous with characteristics of the individual, whether it's a name for a person or a name for an animal or a name for one of these Sasquatch. The meaning of the names range from giants, hairy giants, hairy men, hairy man, um, uh, the boss of the wood, the, you know, the forest man, the wild man, 
uh, to the cannibal giants. So that really leaves just a very wide spectrum open for the potential uh, encounters that one could have. So with that, that being said, it is very important to be careful while you're out. I believe that majority of them are very peaceful. The ones that I have seen are just more curious than anything. And I think that there's something so precious about them. And it kind of moves me spiritually because I would hate to to see something happen to them. And I just want to really encourage people that, to look at them with a, a peaceful eye and a loving heart. But also, while being very precautious and while most of the encounters that people do report are very um, uneventful for the most part, they might be scary because I can't imagine even under the best of circumstances to come face to face with a a creature that you thought was a legend that is towering over you. In fact, there are accounts where some of these creatures look like they're 12 feet to 15 feet tall. It is, uh, it is sobering, but at the same time, they're just living. They're just doing their thing out in the woods and we need to respect them because they are very curious, but they have balanced that curiosity with stealth and a cunning understanding of humans and how we work. And they know they need to watch out for us. So they've probably been avoiding us for thousands of years. They probably had horrible run-ins back in the day. In fact, um, many anthropologists kind of you know, hypothesize that these creatures could be a remnant of the Gigantopithecus, which was a giant ape that, you know, is proven to have roamed the earth many, 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 many years ago. Most likely um, hunted to extinction or maybe near extinction. So you would get very wise very quick if someone was hunting you. And they, I mean, they could stand still. You could possibly walk by one on a trail. I think it's a tree because they blend. They blend. I had an amazing comment left for me on my last video and I just want to say thank you. So nice to know that there are those people out there that have had these really beautiful experiences with these creatures and they recognize their intelligence and they recognize that it is something special. It's something to be preserved and to be respected and to be cherished. So that's the message I want to get out there, but I also want to remind everyone to be very careful no matter where you are. There are worse things out in the woods than Sasquatch. I want to tell you that, especially humans. The other thing I've heard of you know, really stories, uh, encounters gone wrong where people maybe lived on a farm and they have them in the properties that are adjacent to their properties where the creatures start becoming aggressive over food. And many people will say, just don't give them anything, don't feed them to many of the Native Americans really have a, you know, a long history of a gifting to them and giving them special treats and special gifts. And and I, from my own opinion, I think that that is a good thing if I suspect that they're in the area. I always make sure that I put out some fresh fruit for them, especially fruit that they can't get in the area, like bananas and oranges and things that they, things that they like that that they could really enjoy. But I would not habituate them in that sense because it is not good to habituate any any animals any natural animals that need to be reliant on uh, their own skills. And okay, and I don't want to go too long in this video because uh, I got mad rambling skills. But I did want to mention that even putting up a bird feeder, because I live on the forest and I have all these amazing, beautiful birds, especially birds that I did not have in California, such as the cardinal. I put up a bird feeder thinking, well, you know, maybe I'll have a couple birds and this all happened when you know the whole shutdown happened I'm not even gonna get into that but I was fascinated because I was so excited the first you know cardinal I got I was like Woo, I got a, <laughs> I got a cardinal 
Now I have a flock literally a flock of cardinals. I have red-bellied woodpeckers. I have downy woodpeckers. I have titmice, the little tufted titmice. Oh my goodness, they're so cute. I started thinking about it. I, I plan on being here for a while, but they expect me to put food out. So that can be the case for any animal. When you start putting food out for animals, they're gonna take advantage of it. And it could possibly be the same thing with the Sasquatch. However, I mean, my goodness, I couldn't even, the birds are eating me out of house and home. I can't imagine trying, <laughs> trying to keep Sasquatch fed. I mean, oh my goodness. We are all, I think in one way or another, creatures of habit. So just be careful, but enjoy them, love them, respect them, and respect all living creatures, including one another. And again, subscribe if you haven't yet. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up because the more thumbs up I get, the more it will be put out for others to view this and you know just get this this message out to others that um, these creatures are real, they're special, they need to be protected and um, you know, we need to take it seriously and love them. So I want to thank you again for watching being part of my audience. Uh, thank you to all my subscribers. I am just so appreciative. And also just a reminder for, for any of the content creators out there that you enjoy watching, don't forget to subscribe to them and give them a big thumbs up because when we get that feedback, it encourages us to make more videos because it does take a lot of work. So again, thank you for watching. Mm, love all y'all. Peace and have a good one, and I will see you in the next video. Take care.